It's now my distinct honor to introduce a true gun sense champion who has been committed to all of these gun violence prevention efforts at the highest level. She was first in the country to sign an executive order on red flags, the precursor to our strong red flag law. She proactively convened a gun safety working group, which is, was a dream team of experts from around the state that created a roadmap for change. She prioritizes gun safety and better gun laws every chance she gets. She is our governor, Gina Raimondo. So I want to thank you for not giving up and continue to show up and advocate and fight uh, for what's right and to save lives of people in Rhode Island. Of course, I want to thank the Attorney General who uh, is, is very smart on this issue, is an excellent partner to me and with whom I have really enjoyed working on this and so many issues. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, I know uh, Colonel Manny is here hiding in the back. But he has been fantastic. He co-chaired the, the task force for me a few years ago, and he's a real leader on this issue. Uh, many chiefs of police are here. We just had a terrific meeting. Thank you guys for all that you do. Um, all the legislators who are here and the advocates, I want to thank you for being here. Um, so Jen just said it. Two years ago tomorrow, two years ago tomorrow, 17 students were gunned down in Parkland, Florida. And since then, there have been many other of those similar instances throughout this country. One year ago, tomorrow, we all were here. And it had been very much like this. We introduced a slate of common sense gun safety legislation. Legislation that we know would make Rhode Island safer. And do you know what happened with those bills? They weren't even heard for a vote. No action. Legislature sat on their hands, as have people in Congress and the Senate in Washington. So we're here again demanding action on behalf of the people of Rhode Island. And we'll be here again next year if that's what it takes. Because this is too important. It's too important. Let's make this the year that something happens. Now Jennifer said there has been progress. And that's fantastic. And I want to thank everyone for bringing about that progress. But not enough progress. A few weeks ago, we had Gabby Giffords in town. I heard from victims. And it is crystal clear we haven't done enough. So let's not come back here next year on Valentine's Day and say we didn't have the guts to do what was right. Let's get something done. And I want to say uh, there are many legislators here, and I want to thank you all. But I want to call out by name the few that have sponsored legislation. Uh, Senator Coyne and Senator Golden and Senator Miller, I want to thank you for your work. Uh, Representative Serpa, and Representative Caldwell, and Representative McKiernan, I'd like to thank you. Um, Senators Goodwin and Algier, who I think aren't able to make it but have sponsored bills. Together, these group, this group of legislators have put forth bills to ban assault weapons, ban high capacity magazines. Uh, ban ghost guns, as was just referenced, and give police officers more tools to track gun purchases. Together, that package will make Rhode Island safer. People often ask me, what's the thing? There is no one bill. It's a comprehensive approach to a complicated problem. We just had a, a robust discussion around the issue of mental health and how that intersects with gun safety and gun laws. This is a complicated issue. And I want to thank all the legislators for doing your part and putting in an important bill that will make Rhode Island safer. Um, and as Jennifer said, 
we've stopped domestic abusers from owning guns, and that's a great thing. Banned bump stocks and made it possible for police officers to confiscate guns from dangerous people. That, the red flag law has been used dozens of times since it has been enacted, and thank you to the legislature for that. The bills that are currently before the legislature will keep students and teachers safe by allowing only police officers to carry concealed weapons in schools. At this moment right now, we don't even know exactly how many concealed carry perm permits there are. We don't have a central database. And anyone with a concealed carry gun can walk into a school. I have kids in school. How does that make you feel? Not safe. We're one of only three or four states that allows that. Why? It's not the way you want to be an outlier. We want to keep loaded weapons off of our roads, preventing road rage from escalating into a tragedy. And we want to hold gun owners responsible for storing their firearms safely, just like Massachusetts and our neighbors do. And finally, we want to make it a crime to evade background checks by purchasing a gun, straw purchasing, purchasing a gun on behalf of somebody else so we can keep track of all this. Now, I understand this opposition to these bills, and I understand that some people want to check with the NRA before they decide whether they can be for something. But I want to say this to you. This is our obligation as Rhode Islanders to get this right. And these bills and more to come will save lives. We know that. So for my part, I want to thank everybody here, those in the legislature, those who are advocating, the attorney general, chiefs of police, for coming to the table to help us get this right. And for those of you who have a chance to vote, I want to ask you for your support. I know you were all on the ballot this year, and I know politics isn't always easy, and sometimes you have to do difficult things. This is the right thing to do. And I'm asking you to step up and do what's right to protect the people of Rhode Island. So thank you for having me, and thank you for organizing this event.